I'm going to ask Sidearm if you would like to start our debrief. Sidearm? Yes, certainly. So the ground rules here, guys, are we're going to be debriefing you, which means you've been through a lecture experience, an interactive experience in the dark room, and we're going to ask you these questions. And for this to work, you need to type stuff in text chat. So if you know how to type stuff in text chat, type a TC right now. Good, thank you. Okay, the second way that you can give feedback. Now, the good thing about text chat is that it's uh, multi-threaded. So multi-threaded means you, more, you can all answer at the same time and we can read the different answers and we can read who sent them. So John, type uh, John and Val, type Val. Uh, Sharon, type Sharon. There you go, Sharon. So you see, even though uh, I know you, none of you would do this, you would never go AFK away from keyboard during this all-important debriefing. Um, this is how people like uh, diabolical teachers like John keep track of who's here. So in any event, more to the point, in order to have a good debrief, we've got to have your ideas because there's no fun if we just talk into a vacuum. And when you type your ideas, uh, we will acknowledge them verbally, Val and I, and we will read them out. Uh, the other way that you can share is to say something in voice. So um, somebody who's very brave, please say hello, sidearm, in voice. Hello, sidearm. Thank you, Sharon. Very good. And that is another extremely good value form of feedback. Also, it adds a lot of uh, richness to the interaction in the metaverse, because we hear a lot in how people speak. Um, you hear how enthusiastic and passionate Dr. Hill is in her speech. Her, her voice carries it as well as her words. Okay, so here we go. So this is for everybody, and type something in text chat and uh, speak as you wish. What caught your attention about Dr. Hill's presentation on meta-literacy? What caught your attention? Liter uh, Sharon, would you be brave and uh, respond first? Maybe. Um, I was really interested in everything she said, but I think what caught like my question the most would probably be like the question she asked about like um like private like on privacy and like things we post online like um like the like where do they go and what like the stuff we never really think about in our daily daily lives we're just used to it we just do it. that makes sense. Thank you, Sharon. So Sharon liked the what I call evocative questions that Val asked. And Debbie says she liked that Val sat on top of the board. By the way, it's okay to say Val rather than Dr. Hill now that we've all been introduced. Um, I like to call her Dr. Hill because I have to remember that behind that uh, good looking avatar is a brain like a Tyrannosaurus Rex, an intellectual raptor. I don't know any other way to say it. Just have a good conversation with her sometime and you'll be amazed. Okay, uh, Bianca, what caught your attention? And Jesse, what caught your attention? Rebecca says her enthusiasm, yes. Daniela, what caught your attention? Allie says she liked the colorful slides and the enthusiasm. It's also fair in a debrief to say ditto. Uh, Bianca says it was clear and made sense. So several, several of you have dittoed uh, the enthusiasm. Jesse says how well-spoken uh, Val is. Uh, Gigi is typing. Uh, Debbie and Anita, I invite you to please type in chat. What caught your attention about the presentation so far? Thank you. 
So, Anita, what caught your attention? Uh, Daniela is dittoing uh, how informative she was. So, you see how this works, guys. This is a debrief. Uh, a few brave people will say something first, and then you can ditto what somebody said by repeating it, which is good feedback for us, and you can also uh, just add more. So, uh, Zizia liked the slides, and she liked the questions, so she's dittoing the question. Anita is dittoing the slides. Good job. Okay, next question. And you can keep answering these questions as answers occur to you. Here's our next question. What are your concerns about your future as a digital citizen? Karen, would you mind leading us off again? What are your concerns about your future as a digital citizen? Anybody can type answers. I'm just asking Sharon first. And fair warning, I will call you by name again if you don't respond. Okay, Joelle's typing. Jesse says cybersecurity. Thank you. Bianca is typing. Uh, Joella says privacy. Thank you. Rebecca says digital footprint. Oh, excellent. Thank you. Um, he just says personal information. Bianca says her concern is becoming less literate. Uh, sorry, can you please repeat your question? Because I went to get the charger for my laptop. I missed it. Uh, the questions are, what are your concerns about your future as a digital citizen? Okay, thank you. Yeah, good. good. All right. Now, I'm kind of looking for everybody to say something. You're a small enough group that all of you have a, uh, can speak up here. So Debbie, uh, Debbie was, was starting to type something. Hallie says, uh, ditto's privacy and per personal information. And good. Okay. Now you guys are warmed up and we are in starting to be in the popcorn stage. How many of you have ever eaten popcorn? Please type popcorn if you've ever eaten popcorn. Darren says privacy because, thank you. Well, yeah, that's a popular topic. We never really know who's viewing our info. How many of you ever cooked popcorn in a microwave oven? Type microwave. Type microwave. One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight. Good, eight out of eight. Good job. Okay, so have you ever noticed that at the beginning there's just a couple nothing, and then it goes pop, pop, and then it waits, and then it goes pop, pop, and then finally starts going pop, 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 pop. So we are approaching the, the final popping phase here. And this is exactly what we want in a debrief, guys. We want you just popcorning all over the place, stepping on each other's lines, which in text doesn't is not a problem. So now we're going to get to some really, uh, what I feel are even juicier questions. What does it mean to be a live avatar in the metaverse? versus a live person in the wor real world. What does it mean to be a live avatar in the metaverse versus a live being in the real world? It's good, Debbie's typing. We don't have physical bodies, Debbie says. Bianca says your virtual space is another digital vessel of yourself. Thank you. If you don't understand the question, type don't understand. Otherwise, we're looking for answers. John says, I feel real in Second Life. Okay, let's ask, how many of you feel real here? Thank you, Sharon, excellent. Do you feel real here right now? Do you feel that you're really with the rest of the class here? Bianca says no. Sharon says half. 
Thank you. I want an answer from everybody. Do you feel really here with the mothers? Do you really feel here? Do you feel like you're here with Val? Rebecca says, not really. Thank you. Jesse says, no. John says, I'm not sure if I'm John or Tay. Thank you. That's kind of a ditto of the vessel comment. Uh, Joelle whispers, no. Good. Not really. Now, let me ask you a distant question. Do any of you have friends or fellow st students that you regularly interact with by email or TikTok or Instagram, whatever app? Do you talk to somebody every day? I'm counting. I'm looking for yeses and nos. Yeah, yeah. All the time. Okay. When you talk to your friend over the app, are you really talking to them? Are you really talking to them? Is it? Zinia says yes. Bianca says yes. 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 Keep going. Yes. Yeah, but a different way of doing it. Thank you, says Sharon. Yeah. Man, you guys are cooking. You're relaxing. Now you just say, yeah. I like it. Okay, so look, you and I are typing back and forth right now in text chat. Are, are you and I really talking now? Are you and I really, really talking now? Val says she feels not the same. Thank you, Val. Um, I wouldn't say it's talking, but it's, defi it's definitely a different way of communicating. Uh, yeah. As Sharon says, it's a different way of communication. So you guys are bringing out a, a couple key points. Let me just paraphrase them. What I hear you saying is, you know, when I use my app to talk to my friends every day, I feel like I'm really talking to them. On the other hand, when I'm here with my classmates as avatars, I don't feel like I'm really with them. On the other, other hand, I feel like I am talking to you site because we're using text chat, which is what I use to talk to my friends a lot of the time. So do any of you talk by voice to your friends over your smartphone or WhatsApp? Do you, any of you use voice every day with some of your friends, mates? Okay, yes. That's one yes. FaceTime, thank you. Yes. Yes. Okay. Now, Bianca raises a good point. I send voice messages. Sharon sends a video call. I'm looking for some more yeses or noes. I, I need two or three more here. Don't make me call names out, please. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay, good. Voice on Zoom, Discord. So now you guys, I'm paraphrase again. Now you said, well, sure, I use voice, live voice. Like we're talking, when Dan Danielle and I are talking live right now. Danielle, are you there? Say hello. I know you have to click your mic. Uh, uh, no, Sharon. Sharon, say hello. Sharon. Hello. Hi. Okay, hello. Sharon, how do you feel today? How are you doing today? What did you have for... Uh, good. Thank you. Good. What did you have for lunch? For lunch, I had a protein bar and uh, and lucasid. <laughs> oh, my God. That's brilliant. I haven't had anything to eat yet because John O'Connor made me and Val get up ridiculously early for this stupid... I mean, this... <laughs> and, thank you. Okay, end of demo. Did we just have a live conversation on voice, guys? Yes or no? Did sh Yeah, okay, good. So it's obviously. So are Sharon and I having a real shared experience, albeit only by voice? Yes, that's a rhetorical question. Just like you guys. Now, Bianca said, well, sometimes I send voice messages. Now, is a voice, if I sent a voice message to Sharon and she got it an hour later, would that be, would you consider that real communication? Real? Okay, yes or no? Or maybe? It's okay to say maybe. If I sent Sharon a voice message and she listened to it an hour later. Okay, I'm getting some yeses. 
And Sharon says it's still communication. Now, see, I would respectfully disagree with you guys, just like I dis respectfully disagree with Val. To me, I'm looking for instant two-way communication. Two-way, and Sharon and I demonstrated that, and instant, like within a few seconds of each other. Okay? Now, email is communication, but email is infamous for being more famous because you don't have... You don't get an email the instant somebody sends it unless you're like waiting on it. You have to wait for them. Whereas, you know, like in a chat, I don't know. It, there's a there's a buzzword for this, uh, asynchronous and synchronous. So synchronous means back and forth immediately and asynchronous means, you know, time shifted. So personally, I think the metaverse that we're in and metaverse apps like... Uh, FaceTime, create a real experience if you're talking back and forth either by voice or by seeing each other's face right away. I see Sharon, I hear, I could hear it in Sharon's voice. She started laughing. He's asking me what I ate. Okay, sure. You can hear the little humor in her voice, right? Which would not come across in a text chat. And these are all modes of human communication. We hear, we see, and that's the only thing you can do in the metaverse. Yeah, Sharon says she responds hours later. So this goes to the question, is, it, is, being, is the metaverse real? Is being in the metaverse real? And some people like Val, with whom I respectfully agree and disagree at times, says, well, I feel real here. I'm, I see my avatar. It has a physical full 3D representation. I see... Uh, Rebecca and Jesse and Hallie and all of you here and you see me, I feel like I'm really with you. And I I argue with her because I say, well, I feel that way on Zoom. Kill me out. Kill me. Because I can see them right away and I can hear them right away. Now, it's not 3D. I'll give you that. And so people have a respectful disagreement about whether you need to have a 3D avatar or a flat avatar. So I know Val wants to respond in a minute. So I just want this to be a juicy conversation. And the, and the, the question is, and I want you all to participate, is uh, something, what is it like to be in the metaverse? Are you in the metaverse in Second Life, but not when you're on TikTok or face view or I, I, my hypothesis is you're in the metaverse with any app where you have instant two-way communication with your friends or family or colleagues. So, so discuss, I'm going to type it here and Val, take it away with your response. Um, we do like to have this kind of a debate about what the metaverse is, what reality is, what are avatars, are they real? And the way I like to look at it is that if you're, I'm looking right here at a, at a place, I see all of you sitting in a shared place. I moved around. I went over and sat over it. I see that John did too. He just moved over to a different seat. I could move over and stand by one of you. This is a place that we're sharing. Now on Zoom, it's a great tool. It's live instant communication, but we're not in a shared place. We're looking through a webcam at two different places that are separated. This place is not separated. I can walk over and choose who I want to sit by. I can walk over and we're, and so I have completely let go of the world behind me and I'm in the world where you are. Now, I've been here for a long time, so it's easy for me to let go. It's very easy for me to be immersed here and focus on this as a place. But that's why I like to say that Zoom is a tool, but the metaverse is a place. And, and, and in, my, in my definition, which I know there are many definitions, you cannot in, enter the metaverse without an avatar. If you don't have an avatar, you're simply, simply viewing. You're not there, and there's a difference. Okay, I'm going to respond. I'm, now, you guys get the idea. You're going to need to be jumping in here. I'm, or, or Val and I are just going to rant, which John loves. So, if you know, that's okay, too, as long as you're paying attention. So, are you paying attention? If you're paying attention, say, attention. Type attention or say it. Attention, attention, three, four. 
Oh boy, capital attention. Joelle's at capital attention. Okay, I need three more attentions here. Thank you. Oh, I just rezzed a. I just rezzed my definition. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I forgot. I had a brilliant repost to your point, Val, but oh, I could, I forgot what it says. Um, oh, let me, Emily, uh, I'll, I'll come back with it. Um, see, okay, I'll, I'll build on it. See, what I've come to realize in, in th these dialogues with Val is, you know, here, this is my killer question, because you, you guys are going to be visiting a online community in a couple of weeks for uh, Virtual Ability Incorporated. And you're going to be meeting people who are uh, have a disability of some kind. So people who have a visual disability are on Second Life all over the place. And they cannot see their avatars. They can only hear each other. They can't even read unless they have something that, you know, uh, reads out. And they have a very thriving online real presence by their own report. So I feel that that shows that having instant two-way voice communication gives them a metaversal experience. Similarly, there are people with a disability in hearing who cannot hear, but they see and read, and they're in Second Life all the time, and they have a thriving metaversal experience, so to speak. So uh, what do you say about that, Dr. Hill? Over. I think people who have disabilities certainly can benefit from being in the metaverse because sometimes it allows them to do something that they cannot do in the physical world. I work closely with a with a friend who uh, is in a wheelchair and he loves using the virtual world because there's so many things his avatar can do. Dance, swim, fly, teleport to all these amazing places and he can't do that in the physical world. But I like to repeat that the metaverse is a place. I also meet that colleague on Zoom, but we're not in a shared space when we meet on, uh, not on Zoom, on Skype, because he's on a board that I serve on. And when we're on Skype, I've seen his picture in the physical world and he's seen my face and we can communicate live, but we're not in a shared space. I, I get that. Uh, I, I, my, my other point is, when I look at all the senses, see, for me to be really with a person, and guys, I had a full-time career, a corporate career working, and then I went into the online career a, a while back. Um, let's not forget taste, touch, and smell. When you're with a real person, you smell them, you know, you smell their cologne or perfume, or you smell them if they're sweaty at the gym with you, but you smell them. Even if you're not aware of it, pheromones and all that stuff are wafting around. You feel them. You feel the room vibrating. Your body, uh, when you hear a person, you also, uh, low waves will resonate in your chest and all that. Your body is a, a sound resonator. And then taste, um, if you're eating uh, a meal together. So, you know, the perfect metaverse to me, if it was a perfect recreation of us as real, would uh, allow these other uh, three senses to be present. And uh, that's not even, we're not even close to that. But Val brought up a good point, which is you can do things here you cannot do as a physical person. So have any of you, I'm sure, have you all of you flied, flown your avatar somewhere? If you have, type fly. There you go. It, it's just amazing, isn't it? But how about this? Have any of you just been walking around and on a whim just drew figure eights? You walked your avatar around in a big figure eight and ran, ran him or her in circles and just kind of, you know, wow. Anybody? You can talk. Uh, yep. There you go. I watch video gamers a lot, and sometimes when they get bored, they'll just run their avatar in a circle while they're thinking about what to do next. And how about this? Have any of you walked up the side of a frickin' mountain with your avatar or a giant hill? Type mountain if you've walked up a mountain or a big hill. Well, you can type a hill if it was only a hill. Yeah. 
to be quite honest, after I got over the thrill of flying, just being able to run without stopping. Any of you ever, do you ever run for exercise? Can you run without stopping? Oh my God, it's so freeing. John walked on the seabed. So are those real experiences? Let me ask you, are those real experiences? Uh, I'm going to pick a new Sharon. Is it a real experience to to be your avatar walking or flying? Is that real? Uh, no, I wouldn't say it's a real experience. Okay. Thank you. It's a, just a virtual one, I think. Okay, Anita, is that a real experience for you? Debbie, is that a real experience? If you think it's real, type real. And if you don't think so, type no. Okay. Well, I have news for you guys. <laughs> it has been shown through research, and Val could cite some of it, that people in virtual realities, especially the, the biggest commercial application for virtual reality is training. The Europe, Europe actually will help count virtual training in helicopter simulators as hours of real life helicopter training. Why? Does anybody know why VR training is given credit? Why is VR training credible? in the real world. Anybody, anybody guess? Okay, you just typing? Why is VR training credible in the real world? John, no fair answering. You're not supposed to answer this. Oh, Val, she's over fry. Don't give away the answer. But I, I did say she has the research for it. So I'm teasing John, you can type. Sharon's typing. Yeah, John says it is real learning, but that's kind of like I'm gonna. I'm just gonna pick at you guys. Come on, Daniela, have guess. Jesus says safety. It counts because it's safer. That's true. That's actually true. Sharon says it's because it's still learning. So she's dittoing John. Jesse's typing. I want some guesses. Why is VR training credible in the real world? Yeah, that's a good point, Val. I wrote that down earlier. Collision of ideas. I love it. Hallie, why is VR training credible in the real world? I see Bianca's typing. Jesse's typing. Good. Rebecca, why is VR training credible in the real world? Anita and Debbie. Bianca says it's testing your actions virtually. Jesse says you learn real skills through these simulations. Val. <laughs> yeah, in in the end, trick question. <laughs> Have any of you seen those? This is not a trick question. Never mind. Have any of you seen those uh, those viral YouTube videos where somebody puts on a VR headset and they and they show them walking out on a plank over, over like on a skyscraper. And the other video shows them in a big warehouse walking on a piece of board on the floor. And the person's body is literally shaking with fear, shaking with fear because the VR headset is so real. So yes, no, have anybody seen that? Ariana, thank you, Ariana. I haven't heard from you for a while. Now, do you think you have to have a VR headset to experience that? Could you experience that with a flat screen like Second Life? It's a rhetorical question. The answer is yes, you can experience that. I went to an educator <laughs> demo where he had all of us jump into a whirlpool. We, we climbed up in Second Life to the top of a huge tower went into mouse view and jumped in and many of us had um, sinking gut feelings because the it, it, it had sound going out fair it had sound as well as vision roaring uh, 
title, you know, like from the Pirates of the Caribbean when they the pirate ship gets sucked into the whirlpool. So when when measurements, are, this is a hobby horse of mine, but when you attach biometric centers to people's brain and monitor their brain waves, the sweat on their palms and their heartbeat, they have physiological reactions to looking at a screen with a virtu- with a with a representational experience. So I submit respectfully to the class that uh, metaverse experiences are real on two grounds. A, you can get paid for them, like helicopter pilots. And B, you can get scared by them. Or you can get emotionally stirred up. And I'll add C, you can learn from them. Okay. I'm going to um, turn the mic back over to you, Val, if you don't mind, uh, and take it from here for a little bit, because I know you're just dying to to add a few more data points and thoughts. Certainly. Um, I, I did mention in the text chat, you probably read, that Sidearm and I love to have a, an, an ongoing debate about some of these uh, meta literacy concepts, particularly the definition of the metaverse. Um, and we've collided on that numerous times, which is great because it helps you critically think about the meaning, the definition of the word. Um, currently, most people do agree that the meta, if you look it up online and you look for definitions, Webster's dictionary or whatever, often it will say that it's a computer generated virtual environment with the use of embodiment in an avatar. Um, Because without an avatar, you're not really in the place, which is the metaverse. Um, So it's, it's interesting. And one time we were doing our debate and I mentioned, well, if it's simply what you're saying is simply um, simultaneous communication across different across distance, then the telephone, Alexander Graham Bell is the one who invented the metaverse, and I don't believe he did. And so it was kind of, we were laughing about that idea that the telephone is instant live voice. And we've had that for what, a hundred years, but that's not the metaverse. So, you know, contemplating, wrapping our head around words, that's literacy. We're, what is it that we're talking about here? You know, yeah, or the telegraph, exactly. Um, so there's there's different there's ways to think about the metaverse, and then there's also ways to think about avatars. And I'd like to mention here that, you know, um, when I grew up, we did I was not a gamer. We didn't really have video games, but the next generation grew up with video games, so they're comfortable with game characters. And I know my students in the school library when I had my Minecraft club, they called themselves their character. They didn't use the word avatar for it because they played a lot of different games and they would choose different characters. They might be a baseball player or they might be, you know, uh, some other particular kind of character, uh, um, you know, an elf or a gnome or a zombie or whatever character they were playing. Where here, I am me. You can see it in my name. I'm the same librarian that I am in the physical world. So there, you can be in the metaverse as a game character or you can be in the metaverse as yourself. Now there's a wide spectrum there. So what a continuum, if you if you will, a continuum. You could have a lot of different avatars, and some people do. Some people have avatars that are anonymous. They might they might be a male with a female avatar, or a I, I have a friend who has this giant Digimon dinosaur avatar. So there's a lot of ways to interpret who is this person. And I've written some articles on that, whether you are transparent or you are more anonymous. I choose to be transparent here. It only takes a person a minute to look up Val Librarian and figure out who that is in the physical world. I'm completely transparent. Other people want to be more anonymous. So all of these, all of these are things that go along with metamodernism, metaliteracy, and the concerns we're talking about privacy, cybersecurity. Do you want everyone to know who you are? But whether you do or don't, digital citizenship requires thinking about ethics because, you know, there are griefers 
in spaces like this who just want to cause trouble and they can be banned from certain places the educational spaces where i work because we're not here you know this is not a a fighting game or anything like that this is a real learning space so thinking about your reason for being here also helps you realize whether or not it's real certainly if i was here pretending to be a fairy in a world flying over to some war battle zone i wouldn't really consider that real i'd consider it a game so we can put that layer of conversation into the question is this real Anything you want to add to that sidearm? I want to, uh, let's go back into interactive mode with the class. Um, those are excellent points. Um, I wrote down a couple reposts, which I will save. Uh, I love the Alexander Graham Bell crack. I have a perfect picture for that, which is for another time. So uh, Sharon, what has caught your attention about this uh, debrief so far? So the general question for everybody, what is catching your attention now? Bianca says, I have no thought. I have mixed thoughts on the VR flight testing. Thank you. Excellent. Hallie, what has caught your attention about this discussion? Uh, everybody. I think for me, what caught ahead. my attention was the uh, main question, like, is this still our uh, communication? Like, what is communication? Like you're asking questions like, oh, is um is video call communication, uh, voice messages, like what is it? And um I think that's what like that question is what got me thinking a lot during this um class. Thank you. Uh Jesse's typing. Hallie's typing. So what has caught your what is catching your attention now about this discussion? So everybody, if you're here, type here right now. Type here in chat, everybody. Thank you, thank you. Two more, waiting for two more. Uh, Debbie says, is our media presence real? Good, good. All right, thank you. Okay, so um, John asks a question. Let's go to John's question. What, how would you contrast this class in Second Life and a class in Zoom? Have any of you had a class in Zoom or had a meeting in Zoom? If you had a class or meeting type, yep, okay. Yeah, yeah, yes, 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 four, yes, yes, yes. Okay, now here's, I'm going to build on John's question. Okay, if it, if the if the experience in Zoom and the experience in Second Life, are they same or different? Type same or different. One or the other. Different. You can also type diff if you want. Okay, same, diff. Thank you, diff. <laughs> I'm waiting for three more people to catch up here. Same or different. So the question is, if they are different, how are they different? How are they different? I'll start with um, Rebecca. I Go ahead. Oh, sorry. <laughs> um, I think they're different because um, in Second Life, you have an avatar, whereas on Zoom, you don't. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Thank you, Sharon. She says, uh, Debbie, how are they different? I'm going to go in reverse order. Debbie, how are they different? I see Hallie is typing. So the question is, anybody that says they're different, type, how are they different? Just anything. How are they different? Jesse, how are they different? Hallie, how are they different? Hallie's typing. Debbie says, I feel like we pay more attention in the face-to-face -face classes. Thank you. Uh, Bianca says, in Second Life, you can explore the environment. Uh, Valley says, we're able to walk around and talk, but in Zoom, you're looking at a screen. So I would say Bianca and Hallie are kind of bringing up a common point with their own uh, elaboration. Yes. 
And Rebecca says we are hidden behind an avatar here. So we're using our avatar rather than our real face. Thank you. And Jesse's typing. And Sharon's typing some more. Sharon adds, you have an avatar, but in Zoom you don't. You cannot show your real face on Second Life. Jesse is typing. And Jesse said, we can change how we look. Very good. Very good. So is it fair to say that Second Life gives you a certain extra freedom that Zoom does not? You say freedom, yes. Yes, yes, yes. I'm looking or say no or maybe. I see four out of eight, five out of eight, six. Two more, please. Is it fair to say that Second Life gives you a, a certain freedom that Zoom does not? There's another yes, and we're waiting for one more here. Good, okay. Now, I'm going to respectfully repost class. I assert that Zoom gives me a certain freedom that Second Life does not. Have any of you been in a Zoom meeting where the presenter shared their screen? If you have, type screen or yes. Okay, yes, 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 yes. So Val and I many times have gotten together on Skype, which is just like Zoom for this purpose. And, and Val is saying, how do I set my blah, blah, blah to do blah, blah, blah. And have you ever tried to help someone set their text settings over the phone? It's, it's, it's uh, excruciating. But instead, she says, let me share my desktop screen. And she shows me her desktop screen. She opens up Open Broadcasting System. And I say, oh, there it is. Okay, open up your settings. Okay, now go down to video. Open it. Okay, go down three lines and over to the right and click the pop-up arrow and click that. It's so freeing to help somebody if they can share their desktop with you. Now, I respectfully suggest that is a valid form of instant two-way communication where we're helping each other. And I've had people show me the same thing, like how to build in Second Life. If any of you end up building in Second Life more, yeah, sharing the screen. So Second Life, before share screen became available, the good thing about Second Life is they'll try anything. You can play videos in here. But it turns out it's just a lot easier to paste the URL here in chat. I'll just, in a sample URL, saying, go look at that video. Or Val said, here's my URL to the blah, 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 blah. So text chat is very powerful. My point is, and I did have one, each of these apps have strengths and weaknesses. And being a digital citizen or meta-literate to me means being literate in multiple apps and knowing which one to use for what purpose, and knowing when to blend two or more of them. So I, I love Second Life. I've been in it for 18 years or, so, or something like that. But I also love Zoom, and I love anything that lets me screen share and, and so on. So to me, the metaverse is a, an evolving ecosystem of digitally and physically connected apps. And uh, Second Life... Uh, is arguably the first metaverse, uh, the original metaverse, as Val said. I, I will, I will support that. But I'm also now saying the extended metaverse includes Zoom, and both of us are right, and we love colliding our ideas. So that's all I have to say, Val. I'm handing it back to you, and then when you're done, hand it off to John, please. Yes, great summary. I think it's great that we can say both are right because it's not set in stone. And I just want to mention that. It, this is changing literacy. Marianne Wolf, who wrote this great book called Dear Reader, Come Home, brains are changing. Uh, human brain is changing. And the kids in the future, she says, will have a biliterate brain, a brain that can switch between virtual and physical, between digital and print, back and forth, oscillation. That's metamodernism and that's meta-literacy. So thanks everybody. I, you can tell I'm passionate about changing literacy and digital citizenship. So I'll hand it over to you, John.